there are a lot of great tools in the Drupal community that make Drupal development easier, like Composer and Drush and Drupal Console. And for the theming world, the theme generator is what helps us get started on creating a theme more quickly. So just to clear up some confusion, the theme generator does not provide a fully styled theme. And it is not a front end framework like Bootstrap or Foundation. Instead, it creates an environment with all the essential tools needed for a modern and best practice theming. This will alleviate some of the tedious setup when creating a new theme. So more time and energy can be spent on creating new features instead of setup. These are some of the front end tools we use at Media Current. We like to use component based uh, theming. We like Pattern Lab. Um, we love SAS, image compression, linting, and what these tools do is really helps with consistency among projects. Since we've been using the theme generator at Media Current with new projects, it's easy to jump in and know where to find everything and what commands to run. So let's get started. Before following along, be sure to check the documentation for the latest commands, just to make sure there's been no updates since the time of this recording and the time that you're watching it. The technology world moves very quickly and before you know it, commands will change or dependencies will change. So just before you proceed, make sure you check out the theme generator documentation on GitHub. So I'm going to create a custom directory and that's not required, but it's going to help me organize my custom themes. Inside of that custom directory, I'm going to create a new directory for my theme and I'm going to call it Netflix theme. And that's just to play on the Netflix theme. It's just for pretend. All right. So to use the theme generator, we are going to use the command line. I like to use the terminal that's built into VS code, but you can use your favorite command line interface. So if you haven't used the command line yet, it's worth learning some basic commands just to get started because modern front end development typically requires at least some basic command line usage. So I'm going to use the command line to na navigate to my new theme directory so I can run a theme generator. So I'm going to do ls dash al and that will list all the files in my path and format them nicely so I can find my themes folder. And now that I found my themes folder, I'm going to CD to change directory to the theme folder. And then I'm going to see what's in here and then CD to my theme folder. All right. So now that we're in our theme directory, we can go ahead and start using the theme generator. So before I do that, I'm going to run this command that will install the latest stable version of node and uh, using NVM to create an NVM RC file. So this isn't required, but it helps us again with being consistent among projects. So again, we don't have to set this up manually each time we move to another project. Okay, so now we can actually run the theme generator. And you will be taken through a series of questions to set up your theme. So the first thing is a human readable name, which just, what do you want to call your theme? The next thing is the machine name, which should be the same thing that you name that theme folder, a description of your theme. And don't worry, you can change any of these um, when you're done later, if you decide to, uh, and we're going to pick our base theme. So here we only see two options. They're both from Drupal core. Um, I'm going to pick stable, but again, you can change this later if you want and maybe read up on which theme would be best for you as a, a starter theme. Okay. And then should we ignore our compiled files? I am going to say yes. The short version of why I like to choose yes here is that it keeps my Git repository clean of my compiled files. So we're not committing things like footer.css and footer CSS. Uh, this also makes it easier for my team to review my code. Uh, the theme generator readme has more information on that. So if, if you're not sure, um, maybe read up on that. Um, if not, go ahead and choose no. Our next question is if we want to generate any starter components and just for fun, I'm going to choose all of them. And I see this warning here about slick, but I'm going to skip that for now and worry about that if I do decide to actually use the carousel. Okay. So let's check this out. 
If you watched the last video on how to create a theme without the theme generator, you saw we added most of these files manually. Now we have our info files and our library file generated at a really good starting point. Now we can use commands like npm run build and npm run wash to compile our theme with SAS. And one of the coolest features is, now we have Pattern Lab and can use a component-based workflow out of the box. We are going to learn a lot of great stuff about SAS, NPM, and Pattern Lab more throughout the series, but for now this shows you how to get a theme started using the theme generator. Okay, and the very last thing we're going to do for now is go ahead and enable our theme in Drupal. So let's go back to our Drupal site, go to Appearance, and our new theme should be at the bottom. So let's install and set as default. All right, let's go back to our site. And since the theme is not styled yet, this is exactly what I want to see. If you still see the default Bartik theme, you may need to clear your caches. So let's go to configuration, performance. And while we are in here, let's turn off aggregation of CSS and JavaScript files. I'm only going to turn this off for development. So I don't have to clear my caches so much, but we do want this on a production site. All right, so let's clear our caches and head back to their Drupal site. Now I have the tools to get started with theming. Next, we just need to plan out our theme.